So here we are after another very eventful qualifying session in 2019 after qualifying at the 2019 German Grand Prix where again we had plenty of stuff going on some surprises and some very good performances out there as well now before I go into looking at the teams and how they did because Formula One on their Twitter account for some reason are not showing the results of qualifying as of yet I'm going to have to use my running order to take you through the results instead so of course it was Lewis Hamilton taking pole position then in second place we have the Red Bull of Max Verstappen with a great lap to get P2 P3 Valtteri Bottas P4 Pierre Gasly P5 Kimi Raikkonen P6 Roman Grosjean P7 Carlos Sainz great by Perez there in P8 Hulkenberg P9 Leclerc P10 we'll get on to that in a moment Giovinazzi P11 P12 Kevin Magnussen P13 Daniel Ricciardo P14 Daniel Kvyat 15th is Lance Stroll P16 is Lando Norris P17 Alexander Albon P18 is George Russell 19th is Robert Kubica and 20th and last is Sebastian Vettel so now let's get into the teams and how they did today at Hockenheim so first off let's get into the silver arrows of the home Grand Prix Mercedes who didn't quite end up considering what happened to Ferrari they didn't quite end up with the result they were probably hoping for if Ferrari did have an issue you know like that happened to them like happened to them in qualifying so slightly disappointing I think for Mercedes that they didn't get the front row but I think Max Verstappen to be honest did a great lap to get onto the front row ahead of Valtteri Bottas first off Lewis Hamilton great day great qualifying he absolutely got the best out of the car today Valtteri Bottas did not but yeah Lewis Hamilton even though of course he did have a slight slight bit of luck with Ferrari having their issues I think Lewis Hamilton was likely anyway to get pole position so great by him Valtteri Bottas though didn't quite get enough out the car he should have been on the front row of the grid I don't have any doubts about that he was in a car that was quick enough to do so but he just didn't get enough out of the car so disappointing there but of course tomorrow he can make up for it but for Mercedes overall I think mostly a good day but they would have hoped I think for a front row lockout instead of a P1 and P3 next up is ferrari oh dear oh dear oh dear what a terrible day for this team coming into qualifying they had topped all the practice sessions they looked as though they had possibly the fastest car for qualifying and they end up P uh, p10 and p20 for sebastian vettel last of all now vettel did one outlap in qualifying and it became apparent very quickly there was an issue and it was a turbo issue and of course when you have a turbo issue with such little time remaining you have no possible chance of getting out to go you know drive in qualifying so sebastian was absolutely out in p20 so disappointing for him but you know it's becoming a regular occurrence him having some kind of reliability issue in qualifying but the thing that really made it bad was Charles Leclerc's issue because first two qual uh, qualifying sessions Q1 and Q2 he looked great and the car looked good and then soon as qualifying three gets underway they find a fuel system issue on his car how you can have two critical reliability issues that affect your result in an hour is pathetic if you are Ferrari it is pathetic and it just shows how bad of a season it has been for Ferrari again as I've said plenty of times whenever Ferrari have hope of a great result they somehow some way find a way to mess it up because they always do they're better at messing it up than actually doing well this season has been a disaster this weekend has been a disaster and in the race they're not going to get a better result than what they were probably going to get in qualifying i think the best they can do is p3 if there are reliability issues for any of the top three so disaster for ferrari and again another poor qualifying session 
considering where they should have been qualifying for this Grand Prix. Absolutely terrible. No excuses whatsoever. Next up is Red Bull, who did very well to capitalise on the issues that Ferrari did have. Uh, P2 and P4, I think that's pretty good. Max Verstappen doing very well to get on the front row of the grid. And because he is starting the race tomorrow on the soft tyres with Lewis Hamilton in P1 on the mediums, I think Max Verstappen has a pretty good opportunity of getting into the lead on the first lap and winning the Grand Prix. So I think Max Verstappen and definitely Red Bull can win this German Grand Prix. So definitely look out for them tomorrow. But Max Verstappen, yeah, looking very good for the Grand Prix. And I will say, I think Pierre Gasly, I think he did well today. I know P4 was realistically the best he was going to do anyway but if you look at his lap times as the session went on Gasly was actually very good so well done to him and hopefully he can you know have a good start to the race tomorrow and be up there with his teammate I don't think he will but we can always hope but yeah Red Bull looking very good in tomorrow's Grand Prix now let's get into the midfield first off Renault Compared to how we thought their weekend would be, this is a poor result. P9 and P13. And once, you know, Charles Leclerc inevitably overtakes Hulkenberg at the start, they're probably going to be P10 and P13 at the start of the Grand Prix. And they don't really have the pace to make progress, I think, from where they're starting from. Because their car is simply, this weekend, fundamentally, not good enough. It has, for me, too much understeer. Aerodynamically, it doesn't look that great at all. And that's what's costing them. I don't think it's anything really to do with power, even though, of course, power is definitely important here when it comes to qualifying. I think also the grip of the car is not good enough. So Renault, again, disappointing in 2019. And for tomorrow's race, they might nick a point, but they don't want to be nicking a point. They need to start you know, getting a good amount of points to try and catch McLaren. Because with Carlos Sainz starting tomorrow's race in P7, and with the McLaren car looking quicker, and with Lando Norris back in, you know, P16, they've got to start outscoring McLaren. And I don't see how they do it from where they're going to start from for this German Grand Prix. So again, poor by Renault. And talking of McLaren, let's go on to them now. Uh, McLaren, with one of their cars, I think it was a pretty good session. Carlos Sainz in P7. Yeah, he wasn't at the front of the midfield, but if you look at this weekend so far, he hasn't really been a front of the midfield you know, runner consistently. So I don't think it's that big of a surprise. And nor is it Lando Norris being knocked out in Q1, because simply he hasn't had the pace this weekend especially compared to his teammate Carlos Sainz so not that big of a surprise even though of course it is very very disappointing uh, but considering that McLaren are already focusing fully on the 2020 car and they're not really developing the 2019 car that much anymore starting P7 on the grid is pretty good for McLaren so I don't think they're going to be that disappointed ahead of tomorrow's race next up is Alpha very good day for Alpha. Kimi Raikkonen, I think, with the best performance of qualifying. Putting it in P5 and only being three quarters of a second of pole position in a car that is not three quarters of a second slower than the Mercedes. It's over a second. So, great performance by Kimi Raikkonen. Great to see him up there. And I think he will definitely be getting a points finish in tomorrow's Grand Prix. Also, I think compared to... The earlier parts of the weekend, I think Antonio Giovinazzi was slightly unfortunate to finish in P11. Um, because, well not slightly unfortunate, I think he did well to finish in P11 considering how he was earlier in the weekend. But he was slightly unfortunate to get knocked out in Q2. Because I think if he was in Q3, he probably could have ended up in a P7 or P8. Because the Alpha... In qualifying, looked good. And Antonio also looked pretty good. But yeah, Alpha, P5 and P11, I think that's a very, very good result. And as long as they can finish in the points and get, say, more than 
two points tomorrow. I think that would be a very, very good result for Alfa Romeo. Next up is Haas, who have improved compared to Silverstone. Roman Grosjean, I have to say, very good today in P6. Hopefully, he can somehow stay near the top 10. But as we know, Haas will do their normal thing with race pace and end up way outside the points. Kevin Magnussen, P12, he will be very disappointed with that, with, uh, Kevin, because up until the final runs in Q2, Kevin looked as though he was a consistent top 10 runner, but then ended up in P12. So disappointing for him. Uh, and because he starts outside the top 10, I think that's a guarantee that he will not finish in the points. But nice to see Roman Grosjean doing a bit better than he has been and seeing Haas a bit better in qualifying. But when it comes to the race, with their normal race pace, we know what is going to happen. Next up, Toro Rosso. They have the worst car in the midfield. No doubt about it. Alexander Alba did get held up quite a lot on his final run in Q1 and maybe that did cost him you know getting into Q2 but even if he got into Q2 he probably would have ended up P14 at best like his teammate Daniel Kvyat so yeah the Toro Rosso car simply not good enough uh, this weekend they have took a step back from the step forward they took at Silverstone so Back to square one, I'm afraid, for Toro Rosso. The last midfield team is Racing Point, and great news for them, they are finally back in that midfield pack. So Sergio Perez qualified P8, one of the best performances today has to be by Sergio Perez, getting the best out of that Racing Point car. For Lance Stroll, I can't quite say the same. I will say well done for him getting into Q2, but considering where his teammate was, I still don't think his qualifying performance in terms of pace was good enough. So still not good enough, but at least he got into the second part of qualifying for once. But great to see Racing Point improving their car with their new updates. And they've got even more coming for the Hungarian Grand Prix. And knowing how their race pace is, Sergio Perez should finish in the points tomorrow. And hopefully he does. And of course, at the back is Williams, who were miles off the pace. But guys, that is it for the review of qualifying. Now we go into the race tomorrow. And with Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton on the front row of the grid, I can guarantee you it's going to be a feisty one tomorrow at Hockenheim.